Today on Paul's Old Crap, we're going to take a look at the original promo tour that they made for the Apple Copeland operating system, which of course is much different from what ended up being the actual Mac OS 8 demo. And what we'll do is we'll take a little look at the, uh, so I've got these two icons here. Uh, one of them is the, the demo that came out with the actual OS 8 operating system. And the other one was one that was dated early enough to, I think, be specifically about Copeland. And we'll also see um, that in more detail. What I want to do is first just take a look at uh, the inside of this one. Now, this is the one that probably looks familiar for most people because this is what the actual retail Mac OS 8 box looked like. And if we click on this one and we do a get info, this one is dated in mid-1997, which is after the Copeland project was already canceled and they were uh, working on getting some of the original Copeland features uh, wedged into the new Mac OS 8 release, which of course is what we now uh, know as the actual Mac OS 8. So... That one, and I've already watched this one, and we'll cover this maybe in a later video. Um, this one is correct for the actual released Mac OS 8 stuff. But if we look at this other one, now this one has that old um, 8 logo thing that I don't think ever got around uh, to be included in the actual Mac OS 8. Um, I think it was mainly Copeland style that uh, or mainly being used in Copeland promo material. But this one, the created date on this one is May of 1996, which of course is, I think, should have still been within uh, the time that Copeland was being developed because I don't think they nuked it until uh, late 1996, if I'm not mistaken. So this tour is, uh, and we'll, we'll open this in a moment here, but this is the one that they uh, created back when they thought Copeland was still going to be the Mac OS 8. So, yeah, it's, it's interesting. And I don't know how widely distributed this copy was. I only have this particular copy because it was included in a bundle of other Copeland files that a, uh, a user uploaded to my hotline server recently. And I've been going through those files, and I looked at this image, and I thought that was pretty crazy. And this other one here, this Mac OS 8 demo one, this is the actual, this is a physical CD that I have in my collection. And I've probably had it for years. I've got a lot of, like, Apple-branded uh, promo material sitting around my house. So this is the one that was, like, I'm assuming this is the one that was given out to a lot of people trying to spread the word about Mac OS 8. So yeah, naturally, I have a copy of this that I've had like in my house for like 20 years or something like that. So yeah, this is the one that I'm sure most people are aware of. Whereas, yeah, this old one, I'm not too sure how widely they distributed this or if it was on a CD or whatever. So, But anyway, let's take a look at this. This is the uh, original Mac OS 8 tour. And yeah, we agree. So right in this spot of the video, it did have some background music that was part of the presentation, and naturally that got copyright flagged. So I'm just going to basically recite the same words that were in the original video. And here it goes. Apple Computer, the company that makes powerful technology easy to use, is proud to preview the next era in personal computing history. It will make computing easier and more powerful for everyone, and it's coming soon to a screen near you. Mac OS 8. Now, as we all know, it did not come soon to a screen near you because they canceled the operating system. Anyway, blah, 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 just uh, trying to fill up this time where the music was playing. Maybe I should take this opportunity to uh, beg for subscribers. Ugh. So, okay, that was a pretty interesting uh, little intro video. And near the end of it, there was those little uh, appearance elements that scrolled across the screen. And if you happen to catch those, those were the original Copeland themes. And I don't think those, I don't, I'm not too sure exactly, but I don't know if they ever made it into actual Mac OS uh, releases. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, there's other reasons why I think this is obviously um, related to Copeland. If we look at the glossary down here, um, they actually include one that says microkernel. And uh, 
Yeah, it says, uh, actually, the microkernel is at the core of uh, Mac OS 8. It's like, well, it was at the core of Copeland and uh, not so much uh, the actual Mac OS 8. I don't think they uh, really did anything with that um, kernel stuff until Mac OS 8.5. And then at that point, I think it was not a microkernel. It was a nano kernel or something or other. I, I don't remember the specifics. But yeah, so this is obviously very old data. Um, but yeah, I've already taken a look at this, so let's uh, let's run through a couple of these sections here. Uh, the first one here, power beyond speed. Um, and then if we look at the thing that says, Mac OS 8 makes the most of the risk-based PowerPC microprocessor. It's fascinating. And yeah, like, look at this, like these visual elements. This is that uh, the high-tech theme, I think it was called, um, from Copeland. So yeah, this is interesting. Ah, Mac OS 8 plus PowerPC equals superior performance. What does this one say? And yep, we have a bunch of uh, features, uh, multitasking and a microkernel core. Well, sure, maybe not. Uh, but yeah, there's uh, like all these demo videos that they throw in here. So let's take a look at this one. One way Mac OS 8 provides the power needed to run today's and tomorrow's applications is through enhanced multitasking. Because Mac OS 8 can perform multiple operations concurrently, you'll be able to work more efficiently with any application. For example, you can simultaneously make copies and empty the trash while you launch or work with multiple applications. New and updated applications will also be able to take advantage of the advanced multitasking services in Mac OS 8. So you'll be able to make much more effective use of your computer's power, save time, and stay focused on your work. So they never did uh, put that preemptive multitasking in the Mac OS 8 as far as I know. It was still cooperative multitasking, although the uh, re the retail Mac OS 8 did give us the multi-threaded finder, I think it was called, and that was basically letting you do like those multiple file copies and stuff at the same time. So, uh, yeah, some of the ideas that Copeland had did make it obviously into Mac OS 8, but like, yeah, they didn't. I don't think they did a whole lot with the actual multitasking uh, beyond just what you have in the finder. So, yeah. Anyway, let's uh, go back. And what is this? The power to work the way you want. Uh, I don't know if this is actually a video. I think this is just uh, more information about OpenDoc. Um, so if you don't know what OpenDoc is, uh, that's OK. Not many people do, because OpenDoc was one of those technologies that uh, Apple killed off, I think, around the time of the return of Steve Jobs. When he came back to Apple, he slashed a lot of the uh, projects that um, kind of like the R&D type projects and OpenDoc unfortunately seemed like it was going to go nowhere um, with such the uh, or with the low market share that Apple had at the time so uh, yeah just basically talks a little about OpenDoc but yeah and I think that was it for the first section if we look at tools to simplify okay um Information on demand. Well, what could this be? Is it a jungle in your computer? Oh, I hope not. Ah, uh, I think this is uh, talking about the new find system that Copeland was supposed to have. Uh, let's take a look. One of the best things about Mac OS 8 is that it will give you easier and more intuitive ways to find, organize, and manage information on local hard drives or networked servers. Let's take a simple example. You want to move a document from the desktop to a folder that's buried several levels deep. Today, the most common way to do this is to open each folder, one at a time, until you get to the one you want. Then drag the document from the desktop to the folder. And finally, one by one, close each of the windows you've opened. Mac OS 8 will make this process much more efficient. Just drag the document and pause over a disk or folder. It will automatically open. This way you can easily navigate through the contents of a disk until you reach the folder or window you want. 
Once you drop the document where it belongs, Mac OS 8 will automatically close all but the last window. If you change your mind, you can instantly undo or redo your actions. For example, you can undo the move and place the file back on the desktop. Yeah, I think we get the gist of that. Um, okay, so that wasn't the one I was thinking of. That was basically just, uh, yeah, that one feature, which is I think something they did make into OS 8 where you can uh, drag and hold files over like folder icons and it will open for you. Um, I was specifically looking for one that talks about the new find system, but maybe uh, we'll get there in a moment. Mac OS 8 will streamline many day-to-day -day computing tasks with tools that make it very easy for you to locate, open, copy, and save information without interrupting the larger task at hand. Roll over the highlighted areas with the mouse to learn more about these new efficiency experts. Hold down the spacebar if you'd like to see the highlighted areas again. Oh, I think it wants me to do something. So if I hold it over the main computer icon, uh, contextual menus give you instant access to frequently and used actions. I don't think that made it into OS 8. Um, huh. Yeah, I'm not too sure. These kind of did. They don't look exactly like this, but... Um, they're close. Yeah, the little pop-up things that you could uh, keep at the bottom of your screen. Menus now stay open after you select them. Yes, I think this uh, this was one of those things that I didn't like about System 7, is when you click the menu, you have to hold down the mouse button to keep it open, and in OS 8, they, they made them stay open, which was nice. Um... A refined new menu lets you easily create uh, I don't think this was implemented as far as the screen seems to indicate. Uh, I think when you go to the new thing, the new menu, uh, you do have the options of doing like folder and other things, but I don't know if it actually gave you the options of like uh, Excel and Word stuff like that. Yeah, I don't recall that. Um, by adding an icon to the title bar. Was there an icon? I don't remember. Maybe. Um, hmm. So some of this stuff may look familiar for Mac OS 8, but some of the other stuff uh, was not implemented. And let's see. Take the fast lane on the information highway. Hmm. Let's see. Communicate or commute over almost. What is this supposed to mean? Uh, okay, so uh, open transport. Um, now, this is just an assumption, but uh, open transport, I believe, was made specifically for Copeland and then later ported over to the uh, regular Mac OS 8 releases uh, to replace the older system like Mac TCP. So yeah, Open Transport I think was originally a Copeland technology and uh, I think that was basically used right up until the end of the uh, classic Mac OS releases. Uh, enjoy easy access to internet highways. Mac OS 8 will offer another important advantage the ability to integrate internet and internet content into your documents. Suppose that you are a teacher preparing a lesson plan for your students. The lesson is on current events. With the help of a good set of instructions, your students will be able to find what they need on the internet. To create such a document, you're working with a new version of ClarisWorks. In addition to supporting text and graphics, ClarisWorks lets you add internet information directly into a document. For instance, clicking on a button can take a student to information from the Wall Street Journal. This provides them access to financial news. You can also embed internet data directly into a document, such as this live connection to the CNN homepage. With Mac OS 8, internet data becomes just another part of the document. It's also dynamic so that whenever the document is opened, 
information is automatically updated. With Mac OS 8, you've created a document that gives students the tools they need in one convenient location. There's no need for each of them to surf the net looking for what you've already provided. Now the internet can become part of every document you work with. So I don't know if you caught the title bar that was on that uh, demo document, but it actually said the word Copeland in there. So yeah, that's definitely another indication that we are indeed looking at a Copeland demonstration. Uh, and also that uh, demo featured CyberDog, which uh, if you're not aware of what that is, it was, uh, it was like a web browser and a combination of other features uh, into an application that was made by Apple. And I think that was actually uh, yet another thing that was uh, killed off by the return of Steve Jobs. So um, yeah, CyberDog didn't last very long. Oh well. And Video conferencing is easy with Mac OS 8. Now you'll be able to collaborate with colleagues across the country or around the world using the internet, local area networks, or wide area networks. Let's watch as two colleagues use QuickTime conferencing to collaborate on a shared document. Hey, Greg. Hey, John. How you doing? Good. How you doing? Great, thanks. Did you get that sales report that I sent to you yesterday? Yeah, I have. I want to pop into our shared window and have a look at it, okay? Sure. Have you got it? Can you see that? Yeah, I have it here on my screen. Okay. I'll tell you what. I'm going to use the red marker and uh, take a look at this first paragraph. I have a question about that 6.6 .6 million. Okay. Can you give me more detail as to what that figure actually was? Y yeah, let me type it in for you. That was uh, 6.623 million, and that was a 69% increase over last year's revenue. Okay, right. Maybe you could add. Yeah, I think uh, you get the point of that. Um, so the yeah, quick time conferencing was something I don't know if they ever really uh, took it um, anywhere. I do remember seeing that software around, and it's something I'd like to demo at some point myself. But uh, yeah, so that was, uh, I don't think that was actually specific to Copeland. I think that was just basically another technology they were developing on the side. Um, yeah, and I think those were those three. Let's go back here. Help when you need it. Um, let's take a look at this, although I don't really care about the help system. One of the new interface elements in Mac OS 8 is a help menu that offers several levels of assistance. As an example of these, let's look at experts. The internet expert will help you set up your system to connect to the internet. The maintenance expert can help you keep your computer running smoothly. And the Mac OS setup expert will help you set up your computer and make connections to your local network. Let's take a closer look at the setup expert. I don't know if it's going to start talking to me again or what. Experts work by asking questions. In this case, the time, date, and other system configuration information. All you need to do is select the correct time and date, then click on the right arrow to advance. Choose the location that determines your time zone such as the Pacific Coast. To establish a connection to your network, type in your name. If you make a mistake, use the left arrow to make corrections. So that screen really looked like a very old Copeland screen um, with that particular background. Uh, so that assistant thing, um, hmm, I remember seeing it in the Mac OS. I don't remember if it was actually part of OS 8 or 8.1. I do remember seeing it in the later versions like Mac OS 9. So that system or something similar to it was eventually uh, put into the Mac OS. So. But I mean, advanced users wouldn't really care about that anyway. So. Uh, I know I didn't, so. Uh, a computer right-sized and personal? What is this? 
Oh, I think this is the themes demo. Apple recognizes that no single personal computer interface will meet the needs of all computer users. That's why Mac OS 8 will offer advanced customization capabilities. For example, the Mac OS 8 interface can be scaled to meet the needs of a wide range of users, from novice to advanced. It also can be customized so that multiple users can share one computer, and the computer will remember each user's application and system preferences. As an example, let's look at a situation in which four people share a computer. One of them is Aaron, a novice. Aaron has a simplified view of the system and can only access specific applications and files. To launch or open them, Aaron simply clicks once. He can't access the system folder, the trash, or additional menu items that he doesn't currently need and might confuse him, such as file sharing or aliases. He also can't make any changes to the configuration of the system, and he cannot erase disks. Chris, however, is an intermediate user. She can use most of the common features. For instance, she has full access to the hard disk and sees some additional menu items, but other, more advanced features are not visible to her. Chris also has a variety of viewing options for organizing information in the Finder and can adjust the system settings of her own environment as well as specify a password. Kelly is an advanced user. She protects her desktop with a password because she has full access to all applications and files. She also takes advantage of the advanced features found in the menus and advanced viewing options. Mac OS 8 will also give users the ability to customize the look of the desktop with different appearances. An appearance also extends to an application's windows and menus. When you combine all these scalability, preference, and appearance features, you can create, for example, a special desktop for a child named Pat. This desktop could prevent changes to the system, yet provide an engaging environment by combining sounds with new menus and new... This new level of customization will enable Mac OS 8 to meet the needs of a much broader range of users in a variety of environments, especially where systems are shared by users with different levels of expertise. <laughs> so, yeah, um, none of that was in OS 8. That uh, multiple, <laughs> multiple personalities feature, uh, that's interesting. Um, but yeah, multiple users I don't think became a thing until later Mac OS. Uh, potentially in like 8.5 or 8.6, although I don't remember seeing that in 8.0. Uh, and then like some of those things, like those theme features, uh, I don't think that actually made it. Um, but I didn't look into that a whole lot in detail myself. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, let's take a look at this last one here, the freedom to create. You know, I was looking for the find thing, but I think we may have actually missed that one. I think it was possibly in... Uh, one of these options and we didn't watch enough of it which is unfortunate but maybe i will uh maybe i'll actually just quickly edit this and i'll find the one that i'm looking for here uh, let's see here's another important way that mac os 8 helps you to more effectively organize and manage information from different sources the mac os has long supported the hierarchical organization of files and folders but with Mac OS 8, you will also be able to organize information around just about any criteria. Suppose you want to find documents whose titles include the word cuisine and contain the text seafood pasta. Just fill in the search criteria and click start. Text searches will be very fast because Mac OS 8 conducts them in the background 
while you work on other things. You can also manipulate contents of the new Find window, just like the contents of any other Finder window. For example, you can move a document to the desktop or rename it. Your search also can be saved as a special kind of folder. It appears as an icon on the desktop, but you can store the folder anywhere. These special folders give you a new and powerful tool for organizing information just the way you want. These are just a few ways that Mac OS 8 will give you easier, more intuitive, and more flexible methods for finding and organizing the information you need. Okay, so there, that was the one I was looking for. And I don't think any of that made it into OS 8. And some of those uh, find features, I'm not sure if it ever made it in, maybe by OS 9. Um, so there's that Sherlock uh, search feature in Mac OS. I haven't really taken a look that much into, uh, into that, but I think that might be the similar idea for advanced searches. Um, but yeah, the, uh, in Mac OS 8, the actual retail one, I don't think um, any of that advanced searching made it in, but I'll have to look at that at some point. Um, anyway, let's jump back down to this last one here. Uh, this one talks about, uh, I think, QuickDraw 3D and VRML. Uh, let's take a look here. High impact publishing to the desktop. Would it surprise you to learn that in five industries, advertising, graphic design, printing, publishing, and free press services, 80% of all computers are Macintosh? Maybe it's because the Mac OS helps publishers achieve the highest possible standards for output quality, color, and type. Mac OS 8 brings the same high-impact publishing capabilities to the desktop. Just look at what you'll be able to do. Working with text has always been simple. With a combination of WorldScript and QuickDraw GX technologies, it's just as easy to work with multiple languages within a single document. You can also build 3D images into your documents, rotating them until you find the perfect view. With enhanced color sync color matching technology, the color you see on your computer screen will match the color of the printout you create. So you can create publications to precise color specifications. Mac OS 8 continues to deliver the premier platform for publishing. Yeah, that's fascinating. Um, so yeah, that one covered uh, color sync and uh, whatever else I've already forgotten. Oh, well. Um, but let's take a look at this. Add a new dimension to your work. Another key element in Mac OS 8 is QuickDraw 3D. It brings three-dimensional computing into the Macintosh mainstream. Since 1984, the Mac OS has made it simple for anyone to work with text, graphics, and more recently, QuickTime movies. Apple believes that 3D data should be just as easy to manipulate. Though this may appear to be an image of a palm tree, it's actually a digital model that you can manipulate or scale in real time. You can even drag and drop the palm tree onto the desktop to create a clipping file. This way, it's easy to incorporate your 3D image into another document. Just drag and drop your 3D model into any application that supports QuickDraw 3D. Here's the QuickDraw 3D logo, for instance. You can also work with sophisticated models that contain complex curvatures and texture maps. Another area where QuickDraw 3D will be useful is on the Internet. Today, anyone can view simple text and graphics on the Internet's World Wide Web. With QuickDraw 3D and products such as Netscape 
you'll also be able to work with three-dimensional graphics on the web. Whenever a website takes advantage of Quick Draw 3D, as this one does, you'll be able to manipulate, rotate, and view 3D objects just as easily over the Internet as at your desktop. Quick Draw 3D. It's just one of the reasons why multimedia is a standard part of the Mac OS 8 experience. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know how far that ever made it into uh, like Netscape plugins. Um, that's interesting, though. But uh, yeah, Quick Draw 3D, of course, was around for a while until I think it was eventually just replaced by OpenGL uh, or something along those lines. Um, I think this is the last one here. Apple's QuickTime software has long been the digital video standard on both Macintosh and Windows platforms. It's also widely used to bring video to websites. In another first, Apple's QuickTime VR software brings virtual reality to the desktop. To explore some of these exciting real and imagined spaces, select a movie from the panoramic or object menus. Okay, so this is like an interactive part of the demo. Uh, this is demoing QuickTime VR. If we look at some of the panoramics, uh, let's take a look at classroom. And basically you use your click and scroll to uh, move around virtual environments. Look at how neat that is. Uh, if we look at, what was it, Lincoln Memorial. And, yeah, that's kind of neat. Uh, I remember looking up uh, the information on how you actually make QuickTime VR uh, videos like this. And I think originally the uh, QuickTime VR authoring software was extremely expensive in like the thousands of dollars. And it was basically required in order to have the algorithms and whatnot to actually stitch those images together. And I think we kind of take that for granted now um, because like a cell phone can do it probably. Uh, but yeah, back in, back in these days, um, that wasn't something that was uh, very easy. Uh, I think originally when, Quick, or when Apple was developing the technology to actually stitch these images together, they had to go out and buy a Cray supercomputer in, in order to actually process this stuff. Uh, and that's, that's fairly crazy. But... Like, this is the kind of stuff that uh, I think made Apple really neat in the 90s as they were doing all of this crazy new technology. And unfortunately, they weren't making a whole lot of money off of it, I don't think. But, yeah. Uh, anyway, let's look at some of these objects. Some of the ways that uh, these ones work are kind of interesting. So, um, when you move this around, um, yeah, like, it goes way up to the top now. So depending on, I guess, how many original images were available in the VR file would uh, determine the angles you could view the object at. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, what else do we have here? T-shirt? Oh, an Apple T-shirt. So yeah, this one only goes side to side. It doesn't seem to go up or down. So yeah, that one's just... Uh, basically horizontal and then a house uh, this one goes all the way to the top like the uh, power book that we looked at did and same with this one so like all of the images you would have to capture in order to uh, get this all spliced together it's interesting and I think if we click on these, uh, oh, it just tells us basically how to view, how to, how to zoom. You can magnify. Uh, objects can be turned around and tilted. Yes, we already looked at that, so. Hmm. Yeah, so QuickTime VR, neat technology. And I think that was the last one that we looked at. Um, if we jump back to main, that was those. And I think that is basically the end of this presentation. There's no, I don't think there's anything real interesting in the glossary here. 
Um, if we look at like, yeah, Cyberdog. Um, Cyberdog is uh, based on Open Doc, of course. Um, more dead technologies. Uh, there was something that was really interesting in here, and I forget where it was. Um, or maybe it was the other uh, uh, shoot. There was uh, there was something I posted on my Instagram about uh, one of these tours talking about how uh, the Intel CISC technology was so out of date, and ironically, it's what um, Apple switched to after they ditched PowerPC. I think that was in that other Mac OS 8 demo, um, so I'm sure at some point I'll, I'll make a video on that one because that was quite funny to see. Um, but yeah, like everything in here is uh, talking about... Um, how great the risk processor is and uh, let's see yeah the power pc platform blah 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 i think we already know what that is um, previously known as the common hardware reference platform yeah that's uh not something you see too much now uh let's see Hmm. <laughs> okay, this is kind of the same idea. Uh, the name says it all. Complex. An aging technology on which Intel processors are based. <laughs> oh my god, Apple. Uh, meanwhile, Apple has successfully made the transition to the next generation of microprocessors, the efficient reduced instruction set computing power PC. It is more efficient and faster than CISC chips. Well, if you've ever seen what it takes to cool a G5 processor, I don't know if that's really efficient. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Not really any point to looking at the rest of this stuff. But uh, this is, uh, I think it's getting to be a bit of a long video to cover all of these sections of the, uh, the original Copeland tour. And... Um, yeah, this is, uh, yeah, so it's dated here, 1996. So, yeah, this is definitely way before they were even sure that Copeland was going to get canceled and their entire OS strategy was going to change into what it did become, which was instead of trying to make one revolutionary operating system, they were going to take a few of their ideas and stretch them out for a few years until they could finish porting uh, OpenStep uh, and the mock kernel over to the uh, Power Macintosh. So, yeah, that's pretty neat. Uh, at some point in the future, we'll probably take a look at this one. Um, but the Copeland one in particular I thought was very interesting, especially since I've been uh, doing a whole lot of uh, Copeland research recently. And I think my last video before this one was uh, another Copeland tour. So, yeah. I like exploring the Copeland stuff just because it's it's so interesting to me. But anyway, uh, I think that wraps it up here. And uh, thank you for watching.